Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. I'm reviewing one of the most important books I've looked at for some time. It's in a difficult area of law. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute because I'm sure many of you will remember, probably with a bit of anguish, one of the problems about international jurisdiction for uh, judgments in the civil jurisdiction specifically. And that's really what we're looking at today. This book comes to us from uh, Informer Law. Its uh, title is Civil Jurisdiction and Judgments, and it's part of the Lloyd's Commercial Law Library, which Informer produce. Um, it's now in the sixth edition by Professor Adrian Briggs. And of course, Informer Law are part of Routledge, who are under the Taylor and Fr Francis group. The book's available as a book and an e-book. And Elizabeth and I spent quite a long time talking about this book because it's a, it's a big one. It's a very substantial volume and it's not the easiest to read, I must say, until you get into the subject matter and understand exactly where we are, both in terms of the politics of what's going on and also the legal implications. So what we've got as the title for our review is Where Do You Sue? informed commentary on jurisdictional matters within the European Union. And that's really what the book, in very simple terms, is about. Let's have a look at it. It's a hardback. Front cover, there we go. Professor Briggs mentioned at the front. Spine, you can see it's part of the Lloyd's uh, Commercial Library, nothing on the back. The book is heavy. It runs to 800, in fact, yes, 900 pages in total. There is the index at the back, very detailed index. And what you do have is the indexes by paragraph numbering. There are some appendices at the back, not that many of them. Um, but what you have got, if I just flick forward, this is right at the end. There are four appendices in total. You can see the list there. They're not actually that. There is the text of what is known as the Brussels 1 regulation recast. We're calling it 1215 stroke uh, 2012, uh, but I'll talk about that again in a minute. Right at the back you have a piece on arbitration which I found very interesting. Uh, you've got, again, you can see the paragraph numbering and the footnotes all the way through. If we go to the front of the book, it's very heavy, it's a nice mention of Professor Briggs there, and then you've got uh, detail about um, OUP, sorry not OUP, what am I talking about, informal law. Um, now, you've then got the table of contents. The reason I mentioned Oxford University Press is because, of course, Professor Briggs is at St Edmund Hall, Oxford. And that's why I was getting a bit confused. These are the table of contents, and they run through a long way. So I'm not going to go all the way through. Arbitration, you can see, is right at the back. And then what you've got is a most useful preface to the new edition, the sixth edition. And... Briggs actually goes through that in some detail and he's very good because he explains some of the problems he's had, which we will talk about in a moment. You've then got the table of cases and they go on for a bit, of course, and then you've got some statutes and all the legislation of various sorts. Then we go straight into the introduction. Nature of the subject and scheme of the book. Always worth reading if you're new to this work. Um, it's, some, it's a book I saw a long time ago. Uh, because I've, it's not an area I do very much, and I've got a case on at the moment in this area. But what he does say is, few things complicate the law as much as a project to simplify it. Not so long ago, a statement of the rules that defined and regulated the jurisdiction of an English court could be made and explained in a modest number of pages. And then he goes on to say it's not quite the same today. Now, one of the things about Professor Briggs is he loves to use a lot of Latin. So you need to brush up your Latin when you read this book. And you'll be very pleased to hear I'm not going to talk Latin today. I'm going to speak in English. And what I'm saying here is that within the European Union, specifically in cross-border civil and commercial matters, the question is, what is the correct jurisdiction in which a judgment might be enforced? And this is where you find the information out. If this doesn't sound like a simple question, it isn't, because as I said earlier, this is actually a much more complex matter than one would initially think. And as any practitioner in international private law could tell you, it is difficult. And neither are the myriad related problems which emanate from it, any or all of which 
actually do require a very detailed analysis and so you need informed and authoritative uh, commentary which this book amply gives you if you're involved in this type of matter. And as I've said before, it's not something everybody does. It does feature, funny enough, in, or it certainly did when I did the bar exams all those years ago now. And so it's, it's a book that I've been aware of, and the, the subject matter is um, something I have been aware of for some time, because sometimes my practice does come across this sort of uh, jurisdictional issue. The book's been published by Informer Law from Routledge, that's the Taylor and Francis group, and as I say, it's in a sixth edition uh, and is now what I would consider to be a long and established and highly regarded work uh, as the foremost authority on how to enforce civil judgment specifically in the European legal landscape. And the author, as I've indicated, is Professor Adrian Briggs, and he's the Sir Richard Gosney Fellow and tutor at um, St Edmund Hall at the University of Oxford, and he also practices from chambers in the Temple. And the focus of the book, says Briggs, is jurisdiction and the enforcement of judgments in civil and commercial matters in general. That means, he adds, that the main focus of this book will be the Brussels I regulation. And it's a European instrument designated as recast in its most recent form, and I'm calling it Regulation 1215 of 2012. It was adopted in 2012, and the regulation was brought into effect after many delays on the 10th of January 2015. Um, I'm recording this in the middle of 2015, so the book is now on the market. And the end result is considered uh, by many, that's of the regulation, I hate to add, not the book, <laughs> uh, as a rather flawed instrument. The book certainly isn't. Um, this is why it is anticipated that this recast regulation will be looked at again in another 10 years. I don't know whether it'll be as long as that. Anyway, by which time, as Briggs hopes, there'll be another edition of the book. I think it'd probably come in a bit earlier than that, actually. In the meantime, the value of the new sixth edition is that it explains matters which have become unnecessarily complex. Most practitioners will remember how complicated enforcement of overseas judgments can be when they recall their days as law students, days confused and bemused by the intricate aspects of a field of legal endeavour which involves multiple jurisdictions within the EU as well as internationally and frankly it's difficult to understand. That's why you need a book of this length and magnitude to, to try to grapple with some of the problems you may be confronted with and as I've said and it's been mentioned in the book we do need it simplified and I think we're a long way off from that yet. Fortunately though this impressive work of scholarship also dwells on the practical aspects of this area of law, such as deciding where to sue and whether the resulting judgment would be capable of being for, uh, enforced elsewhere. And I'm sure many of you will know that many contracts today and many, many matters ask for the England and Wales common law jurisdiction to be used. And it's flattering because we actually have the rule of law, we have the best common law system the world's ever seen, and it is the envy of very, very many other systems, of which there are quite a large number. But we are, of course, probably the, the biggest and best. But I say that because I'm a practitioner in it. Um, but I do think, having looked at the other systems, that our system works very well indeed. So procedures for serving um, process and for objecting to jurisdiction are uh, very well dealt with. And here we cite only a few examples of the helpful insights contained in the volume. And there's, of course, a separate chapter on arbitration at the end, which I did, as I've indicated, found very uh, interesting. And despite the complexity of the subject, or indeed because of it, the book has been logically organised and I think is quite easy to use once you get used to it. But do read the bit at the beginning about how effectively how to use the book. That's chapter one which effectively sets out what, what's in it and what the purpose of it is. There's a minutely detailed table of contents at the back, which I think is very helpful. Uh, sometimes the contents can be, um, the actual um, table of contents can be limited, but um, what you've got are 24 pages of contents, which makes it a lot easier to find out what you're looking for. You've also got four appendices and then a very useful index at the back. 
um, again, a uh, nice bit of cross referring throughout. So it should be relatively easy to find things quite quickly. There are over 60 pages of tables of cases, statutes, statutory instruments, civil procedure rules, and of course the European legislation. And the book we think should be welcomed as the definitive work on how civil judgments are enforced internationally uh, when you're talking about and involved with interjurisdictional matters. And I haven't seen anything that I've found easier. Um, and it's actually got everything that you will really need in the one place. Every practitioner in this area, particularly specialising in international private law, we think should have a copy. Now, the publication date is cited as at the 10th of January 2015. And the date of the recast regulation is actually put in here as 12-15-2015. Uh, That's in the words of uh, Professor Briggs um, as it went live. But I think we will still probably be referring to this as 12-15-2012. But you never know, things may change. Um, however, that's a minor matter because the book itself is the important thing. It's a heavy book, 900 pages of it. Let's open it in the middle. Staying Proceedings, Forum non convenience. See, lots of Latin here for you guys. And that includes, includes women. Guys include the women. There's the footnotes at the bottom. There's a lot of detail. You can see there. Paragraph numbering. It does find, um, find it easier to look at things quite quickly. Um, service out of the jurisdiction with permission. Here we go. Another one, very popular with the bar exams, always have been, probably always will be. Um, it's quite useful to know about this. You can get a lot of brownie points in the exam with the multiple choice tests, or at least you used to be able to, for this sort of thing. So do, do do your homework, not just with the books you have, but this book itself. If you're going to go into international practice, um, this is an area that would be, of, I think, of very great interest to you. You probably gather I'm a bit enthusiastic about it because it's an interesting area. But I think um, Adrian Briggs, um, in the way he writes, he brings it, al brings it alive quite well. And I'd like to thank him very much indeed for what I found really qu quite, a, um, quite an interesting way of putting it forward and getting into what is a difficult area uh, quite quickly. I found that helpful. So thank you to all concerned. Also thank you to Informer for continuing to publish these excellent books for us. Without this sort of book, we would have a much more difficult time as practitioners. So I do thank them very much for the work that they do in, in producing this stuff for us and for the judiciary. It's very helpful indeed. Bye-bye.